Hello, friends. Welcome to the 12th episode of the Schoolyard Podcast, brought to you by School Specialty. I'm your host, Nancy Chung, a fun loving teacher and content creator, also known as Fancy Nancy and Fifth on social media, and I'm thrilled that you're here. A special shout out to School Specialty, who offers essential educational supplies and complete learning environment solutions to help you transform more than classrooms. And now, School Specialty offers the world's leading multi sensory experience brand, Snoozeland, plus a vast assortment of other proven products and a team of experts to tailor solutions to your unique needs. This is the Schoolyard Podcast, a podcast by educators for educators where the magic of learning unfolds. We are in for a treat with this special holiday episode. We'll be talking about the joys of teaching with two incredible teachers who are not only making a positive impact in the classroom, but also bringing the laughs to social media. Get ready to be inspired and entertained as we dive into their hilarious and inspiring stories, unique teaching approaches, and the power of humor in education. I'm so proud to call them friends. Grab your favorite beverage, sit back, and get ready to laugh and learn with our amazing guests. Our first guest, Jerry Chang, also known as Miss Chang Gifted, has been an educator for over 25 years with experience spanning from kindergarten to college. With three master's degrees, Jerry currently thrives as a public school gifted education teacher for grades one through five in Atlanta, Georgia. Known for her dynamic, engaging style, Jerry captivates audiences with her lively sense of humor. In addition to in-person speaking engagements, Jerry uses social media to inspire educators, parents, and students alike. Jerry resides in Atlanta, Georgia with her wife and two sons, ages 7 and 9. Ty Cook, aka Cook in the Classroom, is a middle school science teacher in his 10th year of teaching. On social media, he shares his classroom ideas, tech tips, science lessons, and laughs. Ty's teaching philosophy is summed up by the quote, students don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Welcome to the schoolyard, Jerry and Ty. Woo! Thanks for having me. I'm Thanks so for having excited. us. I feel like I'm among royalty as we speak. <laughs> oh, I feel the same way. <laughs> You're the one with a crown. Oh, <laughs> I mean, she is fancy Nancy. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> okay. Well, I, you know, I was going to introduce the two of you as royalty. You two are considered royalty um, as social media teachers. Can you share with our audience how you got started on the platform? Let's start with you, Ty. Yeah, start with me because I feel like Jerry has a much better, (laughs) more thoughtful story than I do on how she got started because she's told me. But um, honestly, how I got started and when I first was teaching, there was a teacher across the hall on social media. If you follow me, Kyla and I became teacher besties. And one day she's the type of teacher that she like bust into your door, like during your planning, (laughs) just (laughs) unannounced. And she's always got like an idea and she needs it to happen right then and there. And she comes into my classroom one day out of the blue and is like, we have to make teacher Instagram accounts. And I'm like, what does that mean? Because I had no clue at that time. I'm a second career teacher. So one of the weird things about me is I never knew what teachers pay teachers was until Mm -hmm. teacher Instagram. Mm -hmm. And I never knew what teacher Instagrammers were because I didn't follow teachers. I didn't know that was even a thing that was happening on the internet, but she was following Mm -hmm. these teachers and she's like, Mm -hmm. we need to do this. And so she said, okay, 24 hours, we have to create an account within 24 (laughs) hours. And this Mm -hmm. is the funny thing about Kyla, because she's like, we've got to do it. And Mm -hmm. the thing about me is I was like, I don't know, like, what would our name even be? Like, what's our handle? I don't, you know, so I go home, I come up with like a list of names, we're texting back and forth, and we create it. But like, I am either all or nothing. So once I commit to something, I was like, okay, we're doing this, like, let's just go. And from that moment forward, I would just start storing and sharing And it was one of those things where even at the time, I feel like people around like at school were like, why is he storing? (laughs) Like, what is he doing? Why Mm -hmm. is he sharing? But every time I shared, even when it was very small, I started to notice and realize that the more I put out there, the more that I got back. Mm 
Mm -hmm. and that I was getting ideas. I was getting connection and it was outside of my building. So Mm -hmm. I loved the people I worked with and they were amazing. They had great ideas, but it expanded my circle so quickly. Mm -hmm. And you just realized how much, you know, you think about your PLC or your data team or whoever you're working with, it takes that and it knocks down that wall of your Mm -hmm. building and it made it so much bigger. And it was just so interesting to hear people's perspectives and connect and engage with other teachers around the world. And Mm -hmm. that's how it started for me. And I remember I live streamed you. I don't know if you were there for this, but I live streamed my rabbit wedding. We had class pets (laughs) that got married on Valentine's Uh Day. And this was the part where it really like hit home for me on how important these connections are. There was a teacher from Australia who we know fairly, and their classroom was watching our live stream in Australia, you know, when my, when we got, they got married, but also when the rabbits had babies and I ended up meeting fairly in real life. After they got married? After, yes. And I'll get to that. (laughs) It was after, yes. And I'll get to that story later. But the, the thing was, it was just so wild to think that this Mm -hmm. little app on your phone that seems so meaningless actually Mm -hmm. was very meaningful and it was really neat to see that my students were connected hers were and then just teachers around the world and from there it's just kind of gone haywire but I love every single aspect of it absolutely and that's how we we all became friends that's how we know each other (laughs) yes okay Jerry how about you okay my story is is not as like happy and sunshiny but the true story is um my, both my parents passed away in 2020. My mom passed away from a heart attack in February. Mm-hmm. Four weeks later, my dad passed away, also heart-related. Oh my goodness. They were unrelated. They they divorced mm-hmm. when I was a child. Anyway, then the world decided a month after that that it was going to shut down and start a pandemic. Mm-hmm. And so as you can probably imagine, I was it, it was sad. I was grieving mm-hmm. hard. It was really sad. The country was just kind of in turmoil with a lot of protesting. It was an election year, just a lot going on. And I was like, oh, this world's blah. And it was actually in November. I didn't even have TikTok. I did not have an app. (laughs) I barely used Instagram. Facebook, I would kind of like, you know, if I needed a plumber, I would go on Facebook and try to find a good place. I didn't really (laughs) use social media much at all. Mm -hmm. And I downloaded TikTok and I started watching these videos. And I was like, man, these fools are having fun over here. This is a good (laughs) time. Completely got off Facebook. And just started enjoying this. And same with Utah. I didn't realize teaching was a thing. Like teachers, like was not anywhere on my radar. My first post was actually like a political post about Georgia. And I was like, wait a minute, maybe I could start making some of these fun videos. Mm -hmm. And I did. And it just blew up. And, Mm -hmm. And I started sharing because I was in such a dark place with grieving. I started sharing positive stuff Mm -hmm. I'm I'm not a fan of like toxic positivity but for my Mm -hmm. own grieving I was just sharing like a light and it was just like the light coming out of me it just felt really Mm -hmm. good and just like Ty said you hit the nail on the head when you said I started the more I gave the more I received and it was beyond my school especially Mm -hmm. when you're on lockdown and I was like wow this is really cool and then I started getting messages from people like you inspire me like Mm -hmm. from folks and I have mm-hmm. a disability that may come up later spina bifida mm-hmm. and I started speaking about that and I was like wow I've never spoken about this to anybody in real life it's like my biggest kept secret and then I had this video about me sharing um that I have spina bifida mm-hmm. I had hundreds of thousands of comments and just people wow. just saying hey mm-hmm. this is so cool I have spina bifida my kid has spina, spina bifida it was crazy mm-hmm. and um and then I started going on Instagram. I was like, oh, so then I got a manager and she's like, well, you need to get an Instagram. So I was, I was like, okay. And then Google's <laughs> like, you need to come over here and make some YouTube shorts. I'm like, fine. Then somebody started stealing my content and put it in on Facebook. And I was like, well, I guess I got to go to Facebook now. Just people know that I'm a real person. And so just all kind of unfolded um, inorganically or organically. I organically. Guess. Uh-huh. Yeah, uh-huh. Organically. I didn't really mean for it to happen, but I'm glad mm-hmm. it did. I love it. Well, and you're an amazing storyteller. So you could just be I'll talking about it. like, anything or everything and like everything or anything and it just becomes like it just goes viral because you are real and authentic and you're That's a wonderful every southerner 
we can't help but come by, honestly. That's the southern skill right there. Do I need to fake a southern draw <laughs> to gain more followers? No, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. All the southern draw. <laughs> okay. So what inspired you to become a teacher and what is your favorite part of teaching? Okay. <laughs> I had zero desire to be a teacher. When people always ask that question, who's that mm -hmm. one teacher? N none. Like, I hated my teachers. <laughs> I didn't like school. Oh, no. Uh -huh. I was like, gay in a small town. I barely went to junior college on a basketball scholarship. Like, it was, like, mm -hmm. not anywhere in my wheelhouse. Mm -hmm. And then I actually got an undergrad degree in recreation. I am not lying. I mastered in playing. <laughs> and then when I graduated, I was like, well, now what am I going to do? And I actually took a job as a residence life coordinator. Mm -hmm. And long story short, I got a master. This is how I got all these degrees I have. Uh, three as, master's degrees. Three. It's ridiculous. It's not <laughs> intentional. I got a master's in university administration, which led oh, me wow. to the University of Georgia. Then I fell in love and I was going to, I wanted to like move to Japan or Spain. I was like, oh, I could teach English. So I got another master's in ESOL. Zero desire to be a teacher. Wow. And I got this degree in Esau. The relationship didn't work out. It never does. So I stayed in the States. And um, one of my professors called me and was like, hey, they're opening Georgia's very first bilingual school, uh, dual immersion mm -hmm. school, mm -hmm. Spanish and English. And I was like, eh, okay, what grade? She's like kindergarten at first. Oh, uh -huh. <laughs> Are you crazy? Now, my sister's a superintendent now. She was a first oh, wow. grade teacher at the time. Or maybe she was assistant principal. So I call her. I'm like, hey, you're not going to believe this. I got a job as a kindergarten teacher. My family flipped mm -hmm. out. They were like, no way. <laughs> you're going to like fail. This is not you. you. Oh, no. Good luck, lady. And when I say, when I walked into that kindergarten classroom, I probably wasn't that good of a teacher, but I had so much fun with those kids. Mm -hmm. Those kids, mm -hmm. I hope they learned something that year. Oh, <laughs> I was like, I love because the 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 desire to learn among little people, like mm -hmm. kindergarten, first grade, is unmatched. Mm -hmm. You could go in there and say, "Hey, y'all, today we're gonna learn about paper clips and commas," and they're like, "Yes, paper clips and commas, let's do it!" <laughs> and it, and then I just been doing it ever since. And what um. Would you say what was what am I inspired about teaching? What do I love like? What's your teaching? favorite part? But you know, as you were talking about this, I'm thinking that would be a really fun reality show. I would <laughs> watch it. Oh, right, Ty, oh, Jerry yeah. teaching kindergarten. Mm -hmm. I called my sister the night before, and I was like, "Hey, I'm stressing out." And she's like, "Why?" I was like, "Well, that's first day of school tomorrow." And she's like, "What are you stressing out about?" I was like, "How do you get them to go places?" She's like, what <laughs> what are like, you stressing out about? Uh, <laughs> everything <laughs> in <laughs> kindergarten. The fact yeah. that they're five or six or whatever. <laughs> I don't. I mean, how old are these kids? <laughs> I'm not thinking about standards, <laughs> curriculum. I'm thinking about what if? How do we all go to lunch? And she's like, "You line them up." I'm like, "Hey." Oh, and then she's like, um, so about name tags. I was like, name tags. She's like, yeah, you don't have name tags. I was like, no, this is the night before. I'm like, no, I haven't made name oh tags. She's gosh. like, you make lots of name tags. And mm -hmm. she's like, and get extras because they're going to add some new people. And I was like, you're going to spell some names wrong. Oh, it was, it was funny. But now what inspires me the most, I've been in my school for 16 years and consistently, mm -hmm. Kids will come back to me as young adults. They will DM me. I had a kid DM me just the other day on Instagram. He found, he, he, he left our school years ago. He saw one of my shorts and he's like, oh my God, I'm so glad to see that you're still working with kids. You and, and not one kid has ever said to me, hey, do you remember that lesson you taught about ancient Egypt or the solar system? Nobody's ever mentioned a lesson I've ever taught. But they mm -hmm. were like, you accepted me. You were funny. You were awesome. Oh, you made me feel safe. I loved your classroom. And that's what drives me to keep, because I'm, I'm going to teach the standards. They're going to mm -hmm. learn. They're going to learn mm -hmm. what they're supposed to learn, hopefully. Mm -hmm. But it's just that connection with kids yeah. as they grow and become successful in their own ways when mm -hmm. they come back. And it's like, wow, I did something. I was mm -hmm. a part of that. Yay. Yeah. How about you, Ty? So I also am not one of those people that's like, oh, I've known I wanted to be a teacher. I used to line up my dolls and teach them all. Every person <laughs> I used to have on my podcast would say the same thing. And I'm like, 
Okay, yeah, that was not me. I didn't I didn't have that childhood where I wish I had been somebody who was like, oh, I know what I want to be. Because you know, growing up, it's always like, what do you want to be? What are you going to be? Mm -hmm, right. And I'm like, I, uh, I don't know. Like, aren't we going to figure that out? Like then, you know, mm -hmm. I go to college. I'm like, what do I want to be? I don't know. I just do business. And so <laughs> I ended up working for my parents' company and like for five years. So my undergrad was at the U at University of Georgia. So Jerry and I established we have that in common. Mm -hmm. Go dogs. <laughs> P.S. She and I met in New Orleans at a conference. I literally get off a plane and I'm like, oh my God, I know her. She's from TikTok. Oh. So I just go over, of course, as I do. And I'm like, hey, and like we meet each other. Well, first I noticed your hair because at the time it was pink, I believe, right? Oh, yes. Yes, because we were still in the mask time, like we were masked, mm -hmm. but I was like, I know her. That and so we had, moment. <laughs> I, lo I loved it. It made it very easy to spot. And I knew exactly who you were, mm -hmm. even with a mask. But yeah, so I went to the University of Georgia, got a business degree, and I'm glad that I did. And I think being in education, everything happens for a reason. I love that I had a different experience uh, in that first career, like being out in the real world and navigating that and knowing what students are entering. Because not to diss any like teachers that have always taught, but it is two different worlds, you know? Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. you do kind of, I feel like I'm at an advantage in that sense of kind of what are you up against or what are you going to, what are the challenges when you get out into the real world? But I was just so unhappy at that desk job. I was like, mm -hmm. I was under this kind of, you know, you get into a job and then you start to realize like, what is the importance of what I do here? And if I were gone tomorrow, what would change? Nothing, mm -hmm. nothing. The reality is I was doing finance, accounting, HR. If mm -hmm. I were gone the next day, it would just be a cog in the machine. They would find somebody else. And that can be true for every job. But the reality is that if a teacher is gone the next day, uh, students notice it, that they, mm -hmm. they're connected to mm -hmm. us. We're not we're not robots. You can't you know, that was part of online learning is we realized right. a lot of people realize the value of a teacher because, yeah, we can automate a lot of things, but you can't automate human connection. Exactly. And that's what kids were missing during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And I just realized that I was doing something that although I felt like, you know, yeah, I was I had meaning there. It wasn't meaningful in the scheme of what are you leaving behind in life? And I just knew that I wanted to go back and do something. And growing up, I always, I did have like, I always loved my teachers. I actually enjoyed my teachers. I want, I, I always looked up to them. And I remember one of my teachers, she was like, I said, like, I think I, at one point I was like, I think I want to be a teacher. And she was just like, you're never going to make any money, you know, like, and that <laughs> I was like, okay, well that, that I think I was steered away. Cause I was like, Aww. well, she, they're all telling me not to do uh -huh. this, you know? And now social media, it's, it's not necessarily the case. You know, we have two incomes. Mm -hmm. It's a very different wild, wild west out here. Mm -hmm. um, but I think I was called back because I knew that there was something better and bigger and I would say what inspires me in teaching is the relationships. And just like mm -hmm. Jerry said, I mean, yeah, I remember I used to get not offended, but when students would come back like eighth graders, I teach seventh grade. So like when you would see them the next year, they would always tell their teachers that all I did was take them to play kickball. And I'm like, guys, I taught every single solitary <laughs> state standard. I taught you Punnett squares and cells and the human body. And the only thing that they would mention was uh -huh. when we had like a reward state, Kyla and I, or mm -hmm. the fun stuff. And I used to be like, don't, they're going to think I'm a bad teacher. And then I realized, you know what, if that's, if that's what they remember, what it also tells me is how important those moments were. Mm -hmm. And I used to get hung up on like, oh, they're going to think I'm terrible, but but that's what they remembered. And that was what was important. Mm -hmm. And those are like the things where it's like, you know, connect with them above the standards, because that mm -hmm. is just secondary. And relationships are primary. I agree. That is so important. Okay, today's episode is a lighthearted and fun one right before the holidays. So I thought I'd ask you a few silly questions. People always ask me, what's the best gift to get a teacher? And I always laugh and, you know, half jokingly say, gift cards are always appreciated. What kind of gifts do you like to receive? And what's the most memorable gift that you've received from a student? I got two interesting gifts. Can I say something, <laughs> though, before I of share course. my I always mm -hmm. say... People ask me this question all the time too. 
Mm-hmm. And I always say, number one, I don't care what you get me. If you're giving me a gift with kindness, mm-hmm. that's fabulous. Give it. I will receive it and True. appreciate it. Mm-hmm. But if you do want to know the answer to that question, I will say the same thing you just said. Mm-hmm. You know, cash is always fun. Gift card. <laughs> And don't uh-huh. make assumptions like the the alcohol and the wine with teachers. Oh, is, right. Like alcohol and coffee, I'm sorry, is like mm-hmm. overplayed a lot with teachers and like mm-hmm. mom life and stuff. Mm-hmm. You, and I've had so many teachers give me coffee gift cards so they don't drink coffee. And you never know anyone's like alcohol status. So mm-hmm. don't give alcohol unless you know mm-hmm. their alcohol status. Okay. Mm-hmm. I just wanted to say that. You can edit that out if you want. But No, but that's great you, advice. You know, I just people ask me that question all the time. And I'm like, unless you really know the teacher and they, like you know they like a nice Cabernet, fine, give them some Cabernet. Mm-hmm. But don't just assume. Because I've had so many parents like give me like, I don't drink liquor. And mm-hmm. they just give me like all this hard liquor. I'm like, what am I going to do with this? And I just mm-hmm. give it away. Anyway, mm-hmm. but I still appreciate it because it's a gift. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Two of the funniest gifts. The funniest gift I've ever received, and I kept it, is a Make It Rain money maker. And it is a <laughs> get rain like money, money gun. <gasps> yes, it is yeah, a yeah. gun. Uh huh. Shoots out money. That better have been filled with money. It was filled with fake money. <laughs> oh, and so the parents, one of those. Uh-huh. The parents took the kid to Target and they said, pick out Miss Chang a gift. You, you're within reason, find something that you think would fit her. And that's what this kid bought. And the, oh, I, he God. thought I needed. That's my funny oh. one. My other one's actually really sweet. It came from a student who didn't have a lot of money. It was kindergarten at the time, very low income area. And through the whole week, kids are bringing like bringing you stuff. Here's a little mm-hmm. gift. And this kid is watching all these people, all these young kids bring me gifts throughout the week. And the Friday before school let out, she comes in and it's wrapped up in like a napkin. And mm-hmm. I open it up and it is a used tube of lipstick. Well, I've gotten those two before. And mm. I mean, and so you think about, you're asking me to share what is my most memorable gift. Mm-hmm. It's not the, I mean, I love the cash and the gift cards, but it was a used tube mm-hmm. of lipstick. And this is probably like 18 years ago. And I still mm-hmm. remember this because mm-hmm. that kid, well, sadly, she probably snuck in her mom's makeup drawer and stole yeah. the it. That's a side note. <laughs> she, I don't even wear makeup. Mm-hmm. She was like wanted to give me something. Give you so something, fun. yeah. And then she wanted to wrap it. And, oh. and it was so touching. So that's my mm. touching one, yeah. Yeah, I had a student one time bring me, uh, I, I don't even know if it was Christmas or Valentine's. I can't remember. But mm-hmm. I just remember them bringing me uh, roses. and and But it was like they had cut off uh-huh. of a knockout rose bush. Like oh, just a stem God. of it, you know, uh-huh. but they were so proud of it. And I was like, who knows whose bush they had like, you know, <laughs> taken this from. But uh-huh. they presented it to me like a rose on Valentine's Day. You know what I mean? Like if oh, it's in a bouquet. Uh-huh. And I was like, it was so sweet. It was in a Kleenex, you know, so that's uh-huh. kind of like the vibe. But they were so proud of it. And uh-huh. like Jerry said, I mean, the reality is, you know, I don't whatever they want to give me is great. Uh, Mm -hmm. But whether it's something handmade and honestly, a card, I really think Mm -hmm. to be honest for me personally, Mm -hmm. and I don't want that to sound bad. Like I wouldn't appreciate a gift card because I will. Um, (laughs) But, but, but if you write something out, you know, because I'm just saying like, I'm the type of person that, you know, like gift cards are easy to give. You go at checkout, you get it. But like, if somebody writes a thoughtful message and I'll tell you, here's a here's the pro tip for parents out there. I love to hear it from a kid but Mm -hmm. I see the kids every day and they Mm -hmm. actually will express things. I don't hear gratitude from parents as often. Mm -hmm. So you may sit down at a dinner table and think, wow, you know what, Miss Chang, she had this amazing lesson. My kid comes home and sits at the dinner table and talks about her, but Mm -hmm. y'all don't always convey it to us. Mm -hmm. And so if you have a really cool story or something, the way that you feel, we don't hear positive things nearly as often as we hear negative. And putting that into a card along with whatever it is you want, that's more meaningful than anything because that teacher needs the uplift and the boost. And to know that you you see and hear what we're doing at school Mm -hmm. at home as a parent. Mm. Okay, so my love language is words of affirmation. So cards like that, you know, any kind of like positive affirmation, it just makes me cry. And I I do love those so much. And don't you save it? Like I have a folder every year Mm -hmm. I keep for any note or anything like that. Mm Mm-hmm. So, so many teacher friends tell me that they have like a box or like an album of those special, they can't save every card, but those special ones that really touch Mm -hmm. their hearts. 
they whenever they're feeling kind of down, they'll open that up and they'll reread those cards. And it's kind of like a reaffirmation of why we're staying in teaching and why we still right. continue to show up every day. But yeah, I, I do really love those handmade cards. All right. So if you were like Oprah or Ellen, and if you were able to do a generous giveaway saying, you get a car, you get a car <laughs> or something, you know, something like that, what would you give away to your teacher friends? So first, let's think, let's talk about what you would give away to your teacher friends and then maybe to your students. If you were to say, you get this, you get this, everyone gets this. Vacation, a trip. When I say vacation, I mean a trip. You okay. choose the place, whether you throw a dart at a world map, somewhere mm -hmm. you've always wanted to go, whether it's cultural, whether mm -hmm. it's Disney-ish related, mm -hmm. whatever. And, and then you, if you want it to be kind of like spa, do you want it to be adventurous, whatever, mm -hmm. all expenses paid, your kind of vacation. And, and, and actually, I would give the exact same gift to my students. Mm -hmm. It would be the exact same gift. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I, yeah, I would agree. Like experiences really trump everything else because, mm -hmm. you know, those are the things that they're going to remember. And also, too, it's not a material possession. It's it's something that they could do with their family. So Quality I think that time. would be the best thing. I do think teachers like if we're really giving out Oprah gifts, I would say a raise that's like commensurate to what they actually deserve to be paid mm -hmm. in this country with inflation. Mm -hmm. If we're just going to like put stuff on the table, I would probably sure. put that out there. <laughs> But it, yeah. definitely an amazing experience and a trip. And a trip Thank to the you. bathroom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, a few <laughs> a trips free, to the bathroom. Free bathroom pass. Free yeah. bathroom pass. And you pass. know what? While we're at it, they can dress uh -huh. down every day. We're yeah. wearing jeans if we want to because uh -huh. you can. It don't make a difference. Because I wear know. jeans for free. <laughs> That's jeans right. Free. You know. get jeans passes. You get jeans passes. <laughs> I know. I feel so lucky. We could wear jeans every day. But, you know. Lord, you come down to every... the South. You'd be paying $20 a month. No. You donate. I'm telling Actually you. Actually pay cash? <gasps> yes. Why it's if you nice? want to donate, if you want to donate, to, it's usually a fundraiser. So it'll be like this year, you know, we have an angel tree. Mm -hmm. If you are sponsoring an angel, that's part of it. It could be multiple people sponsoring a student in need at our school. Some mm -hmm. months it might be something else. But yeah, jeans passes, you pay for them. That's why we're mm -hmm. going to be handing them out. She's going to get her money gun and it's just going to be oh, jeans yeah. passes. <laughs> yeah, <all right. laughs> Make it rain. <laughs> Okay, well, and I, I wrote a little note to myself saying, send Jerry a tube of used lipstick for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> what color? <laughs> yeah, I'm just kidding. Okay, so we have a segment on our podcast called Tag Your It, where our listeners write in with a question. And today's question came from Jeremy L. And he asked, if you weren't teaching, what else could you see yourself doing? I always go first. You go first, Ty. Yeah, okay, Ty. Okay, <laughs> what would I... Oh, interesting. Okay. So I, I mean, like I said, did I know what I wanted to be when I grew up? No. You think now I'm going to have a second career to tell you? No. But <laughs> uh, during the pandemic, because of social media, mm -hmm. I interviewed to be a host of a TV show randomly. And honestly, and it was kind of like, okay, just imagine this. I was really upset that I didn't get it, but it was like, <laughs> uh, let, uh, what was it like? Do you remember Gumshoes? What was the show? Where in the world is Carmen San Diego? So mm -hmm. it was kind of like that, like a little bit of that vibe with like Legends of the Hidden Temple and like a nature show. It was oh. it was like science and animals. And I was like, uh, sign me up. Uh -huh. I was like, I would do that all day long. I love I love to talk. I love animals. I like everything about this. So I could see, I don't know, like hosting a show, maybe. Oh, I could totally see you doing this. So that's mm -hmm. it. That's that's all we have. You know, if teaching mm -hmm. doesn't work out, you'll see me on. Yeah. um you know, what, Nat Geo or something? <laughs> <laughs> but you know, on TikTok and Instagram, like you were hosting your own show every day. <laughs> yeah, they didn't want me. So we're still just on, just on the TikToks. <laughs> well, it's their loss. <laughs> their loss. The show is just 60 seconds long. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> How about you, Jerry? Um, a motivational speaker. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think, you know, I didn't realize that my stories and my journey of things that I've lived and experienced that has inspired people until I started posting online. And I still, sometimes mm -hmm. it's a humble pill for me to swallow, but mm -hmm. I, if I could get my story out more like mm -hmm. in person and meet people and share that story on mm -hmm. a stage or something, something like mm -hmm. that. Oh, yeah. and the conference that we were at Jerry session, 
there was standing room only and the door was open and people were outside in the in the hallway like they, there was not enough room like not enough space for them to jam in I was like oh I wish she had a bigger room but I mean and what's you cool are about truly that uh -huh. is, uh, some lady hit me up there now I'm, I'm going to Canada <gasps> in February and doing a talk it's going to be in mm -hmm. Edmonton it's not just like hey I'm going to Vancouver like mm -hmm. it's like Ed, it takes it's going to take Fine. me like eight hours to get there on two planes mm -hmm. Oh, I, already, wow. I already bought a coat. I bought a Patagonia. Like I told them, I wanted Patagonia. <laughs> I was like, I want the biggest. <laughs> I mean, this thing is. I look like a caterpillar. It's ridiculous. But anyway, I'm going in February. Like way in Canada. My whole family's going. They want to go see. <laughs> that is cool. That's a cool <laughs> byproduct so cool. of social media, right? Oh, absolutely. You know how you mentioned uh, running into Jerry. Remember, I was supposed to be there with you. <laughs> I I forgot about that. Yes. yes. Yeah, I was gone for like another conference and was a little bit overbooked and I thought I wanted to be home. But that ended up being one of the biggest regrets of my life. And then you had FOMO. Down. And then you told me that you you ran into Jerry and you guys hung out. And I was like, <laughs> and I was so jealous, right? And I was like, We I was had such a good time. Myself. We were in New oh, Orleans. We, we were on Bourbon Street. Oh, I, don't I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. The camera guy from Cami. Yes, oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. He was like a long-haired surfer dude. Yes, he had just gotten back from Bali. We had <laughs> such a good time. I don't want to hear about it. I know you had a bad time. You're we would have had even it. more fun had you been there. Oh, for sure. Well, Jerry and I could talk about how much fun we had on the cruise last summer. <laughs> I know. Y'all FaceTime me from. Oh, that's but right. I was very, oh, we were... I was very excited for y'all. Y'all were living your oh, best life. Thank you. That was so fun. Well, both of you are so amazing. Uh, thank you so much for taking time off of your busy, busy schedule to come on this show. I really appreciate you. Um, and two of you just bring so much positivity and fun to the online teaching community. And I'm so proud to call you guys friends. My R IRL friends. <laughs> too. That's right. Thank you for having us, well, Nancy. It was yes, so good to get you. to hang out and reconnect. This was yeah, so fun. To, you need to come to the East Coast. I know. I Seriously, know. I mean, I really we do. live an hour and a half away. We're I'm in really, Chattanooga. She's in Atlanta. We're and really I've never been to Georgia. I've been to many states, but I've never been to Georgia. Well, I've already cool. been to the OC. P.S. Before we end this, we need to tell the people. Nancy and I were out in L.A. and we ran into who? <gasps> Nancy? Oh, well. <laughs> you just got to leave this out. You tell them. You tell them. We ran into Lance Bass at the bar uh -huh. he owns in West Aww. Hollywood. And Nancy and I, our friends were like, we're not going to say hey. And we're like, we are. So we <laughs> like go over. We get a picture with him. He was nice as can be. Uh -huh. And yeah, we're we're so not nice. below stalking people. So. so we were actually like hanging out in the hallway because we knew he went into the bathroom. So we were kind of <laughs> hanging out outside. And as soon as he came out, can we get a picture with you? Oh, <laughs> that's yeah. cool. Are your hands wet? <laughs> <laughs> right. We, we didn't say handshake. No, and it has actually been in my classroom that's right oh, when he was that's visiting. right yeah. so uh hello cool. come see our classroom so you can get a two-for-one special i would love Definitely. that i would love to visit and jerry your school seems like such a fun place to be okay my face hurts from laughing so much <laughs> <laughs> but thank you thank you so much it was fun mm -hmm. it was i was glad to catch up i was like jerry yes sign me up yeah, i haven't I seen excited. you guys in new orleans yes uh-huh Okay. Oh, well, y'all have a good night. It was great Bye. chatting with y'all. Good night. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Good, good night. night. Good night, everyone. Bye. 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 Thanks for having Thank us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you again for joining us for the 12th episode of the Schoolyard Podcast. Remember to pack your curiosity and meet us back in the schoolyard for our next episode. Until then, everyone at School Specialty would like to wish you a wonderful holiday season. Tag, you're it. Now it's your turn to write in with a question which we will answer here on the Schoolyard Podcast for our segment called Tag, You're It. Tag us on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, or Twitter at School Specialty and hashtag Schoolyard Tag, You're It with a question that you want answered. One question will be selected per episode to be answered by our feature guest and myself. And if your question is chosen to be answered on the podcast, we'll send you a very special Schoolyard Podcast t-shirt. Class dismissed.